my name is Sarah Bowen. I'm the artist behind Tiny Things by Bowen, and I am excited you are here today for the polymer clay earrings class. The materials that you're going to be needing for this class are, of course, polymer clay. Whatever brand you want to try to work with, go for it. We've got my all-time favorite is Fimo Soft because it is really sturdy after it is baked, but it is a little bit harder to warm up and condition. A lot of people who make this style of earring use Sculpey or even Sculpey Souffle, which is really, really soft and has a lot of interesting colors. But you can also use off brands or store brands from places like Michaels or Hobby Lobby. You will also need, if you have one, a little clay roller. So I purchased this at the craft store. It is meant for clay, but if you don't have one of these, Really anything with that same basic shape will work. I'll show you that we can actually even use a marker. It does limit our space a little bit because you won't want that line to show where the lid is, but we can still roll about that much. You will also need an X-Acto knife or something similar. Um, if you bought a set of clay tools, they do have small blades that aren't as sharp, um, maybe better for younger people working with them. If you have one of these kind of long knives, it is going to be really useful. You don't have to have one, but if you do, you might as well use it for this project. And depending on what style of earring you want to make, you'll need to get the findings for that. That's what we call the little metal pieces that we glue on and put in to make them wearable. So if you like this style, it is a stud which looks like this, you glue that to the back, and then a jump ring, which is a little loop that we attach the stud to the dangly part. You could also choose to do hoops like this that dangle from the hole. If you do that, then you will need a little eye pin to put in the earring to attach to that piece. So just make sure that you have the right hardware for whatever you want to be making. And to affix all of it, once it's done baking, we will want to use glue. I like using Gorilla Glue. Um, you can also use E6000s, so just some kind of super glue. And when we're putting the earrings together, it is useful to have two pairs of pliers. You don't have to, um, you can definitely make do with just one, but I like to have two so that I'm never relying on my fingernails to pull things apart or stick them in. And it's important that the surface that you're working on is flat and clean. So I have a nice smooth ceramic tile here. These are really cheap to buy at the hardware store. You can also use these small ones. Um, I love using the small ones because you can just put them right inside the oven. And I use a toaster oven. You can use a full-sized oven. So if you're doing that, you can put this whole slab in there. Um, but if you're going to be playing with polymer clay for any period of time, I would suggest just grabbing a couple of these tiles. You can also use shape cutters if you have them. So these are designed specifically for polymer clay. They're very small and precise and sharp, a little bit dangerous. You could also use metal cookie cutters or cutters that are intended for like fondant. There's a lot of crossover in the cake world with the polymer clay world, so you can use those tools. But I'm gonna show you how to just cut out a shape without them, so you don't have to have them. Lastly, um, you can play with anything that is a powdered pigment. So I love using chalk pastels, not oil, but chalk pastels, because you can scratch them up and get a fine dust that you can use to color. And also um, eyeshadow. Eyeshadow works great for kind of painting that on, and once it bakes, it's going to stay on there. So those are just some options of things that you could choose so to begin, one of the most important parts of working with polymer clay is to condition it. So that means making friction, rolling it in your hands, getting it nice and soft. If you try to work with it before it is conditioned, it's very brittle and kind of crumbly and pretty frustrating. So make sure before you start that your colors are nice and warm and ready to go. So like I said, I'm gonna show you three different ways to make slabs. The first one is just by placing designs right on top of an already rolled out piece of clay. So once my base color is nice and warmed up, I'm going to start by just using my fingers to flatten it out. Now you'll probably be working on a larger scale than this, maybe making a big sheet that you can cut multiple pieces out. Because I'm going to do three different versions, I'm going to keep them pretty small, but I 
flatten it out with my fingers to pretty close to the thickness that we want. We don't want it to be really thick because it would be heavy and we don't want it to be really thin because it could snap. So I do want it to be really level though. So I'm going to take my roller, whether it's a real clay roller or you're making do with something at home and just roll it out like that. So once you have the background slab rolled out, choose what colors you want to put in there. I think I'm just going to do kind of some random shapes. Wouldn't even say geometric. I'm just going to make them blobby. I'm going to smoosh the additional colors pretty flat when I go to roll them, put them on. We will roll over it, but I don't want to have to really smoosh the base much more. So I'm just going to put some random color blobs on here. Okay, so I have taken some blue and kind of flattened it out, stuck it on there, and then I just crumbled up some little pieces of green. I just kind of pulled them off with my fingers, set them on there, I'm going to go ahead and press them into the surface. So once it's nice and pressed down in there, I'm just gonna go and give it a few rolls with my roller. And from here, I wanted to show you how much you could do with texture if you decided to. So you could take your little pen tool and go in and do maybe little X's. There are tons of tools around your house that you could play with for texture. So you could get a toothbrush and use a nice clean toothbrush to tap in texture like that. You could use a toothpick and do little dots. So find things around the house that might work for you. So this is completely optional, but I want to show you kind of what it looks like to use the eyeshadow on your piece. So I have a gold eyeshadow that I've just been using for crafts for a long time. And you can just use a regular old paintbrush to get some of the pigment off of there and you can paint it on to your surface. So I'm just putting in lines and I'm kind of dragging it across and letting it fade out where the pigment runs out off of the brush. And it's giving me a pretty cool design. And sometimes you kind of have to know when to stop. So the pastel works essentially the same way. But here is my first little slab. I'm gonna show you up close how it turned out and then move on to the next style. So here's how it turned out. You can see the texture, you can see the pigment. Now our next slab is going to be marbled. So to marble your clay, choose what colors you wanna use get them nice and conditioned and warmed up and roll them out into little snakes. So I'm going to use the same three cool colors just to kind of give you an idea of how different they can look using different techniques. So I've rolled these out into little snakes. If you are not familiar with polymer clay, you might be surprised to find that my hands are getting pigmented. That's an important thing to acknowledge because if I went from a dark color to rolling maybe like a white or a yellow, I would ruin that color or at least turn it to a new color because the pigment kind of rubs off. So be sure to wash your hands either with soap and water or with a, a hand wipe in between pigments. But because all of these cool colors um, are really similar, I'm not bothering with that. So while I was talking, I forgot to tell you what I was doing. I twirled all of the snakes together. So I just held one end and spiraled from the other end. Got it nice and swirly like this. Now what I'm gonna do is just unceremoniously ball it back up. Just smoosh it together, roll it in a sphere. And you'll start to see how different it gets the more you marble it. So right now we have kind of a splotchy, almost zebra stripey look. That is not the marbled texture that I want to go for. So I'm going to roll it back out into a snake again. Twist it up some more. Maybe swirl it together this time like that. Ball it back up. And you just kind of have to make a decision of when to stop. When do you like it? 
when is it the style that you wanted still a little bit stripy for me i think i would like it to look more like real marble where it starts to kind of fade the colors fade into each other so in addition to just twirling it i'm actually going to do some smushing so i'm going to ball it back up i'm going to smush And you can see how it has started to look. Ooh, that side's even prettier. So just get to a point that you like it and stop. If you do not stop, you're just gonna mix yourself a whole new color, which is fine. You'll get like an in-between blue color, but that's not your goal if you're going for the marbly look. So I really like how this little section looks. So I'm going to start flattening from there. It needs to be thick enough that we can still roll it out and it not be too thin because the rolling is what's going to get it nice and uniform. So I've got it smushed into a good shape. I'm using that friction to kind of rub out any seams that show up where we've balled it back together. And I think that looks pretty cool. It's like a little tie dye or an oil slick. I'm going to roll that out. You'll get a feel the more you do it um, as to how thick you want it. If you have one of these long blades like this, it's excellent for helping you get the clay up off of your surface, whether that means like now I just want to move it to stretch it a little differently or later when you need to actually get the earrings in the oven. This tool works really well for that. So I really like how this has turned out. I'm not going to add texture or color or pigment to it. I think that it's pretty great the way it is. So I'm gonna leave it and show you the next version of the slab. But let me give you a close up of this one here. Okay, so for this last version, I wanna show you how to make a polymer clay cane. That is actually what these earrings are made of. And that means that we're going to make kind of a large version of something, roll it down into a tube and slice it. I'm going to be making a sunflower cane. So I'm starting with the little interior of the flower. I'm using a brown and I just rolled a little snake like that. And I am going to place my petals around the outside of it. So I'm actually going to roll out a long snake of the yellow and then kind of use this interior of the flower as a measurement to know how long I need to be cutting the pieces for the petals. So I've got my little yellow snake rolled out here. I'm gonna line up the interior of my flower and cut to be the same length. I'm just gonna go down the line Okay, so all my pieces have been cut and I'm ready to assemble it. So I'm just going to take and surround that interior of the flower with the petals. And so this is what the beginning of my cane looks like. But I'm going to take and put little bits of brown around the outside because we're going to roll it down into a cylindrical shape and so we don't want to smush our petals so I'm going to kind of fill each crack with a little sliver of brown and if you use your pincher fingers to go in and pinch a little point on the snake you can line that up in the interior of the two petals on the flower like that. So I'm going to do that enough times to completely go around the flower and I'll see you then. Okay, so this is what the little cane is looking like now. It still doesn't look like much. It's kind of blobby. You just kind of have to trust the process when you make canes. And now we're going to go ahead and stretch it out. So take your time in doing this. Don't try to do it super fast, but basically I'm just rolling it you can start to do it down here on your work surface. Try to distribute the pressure evenly. Try not to kind of like smush down right in the middle because that'll disform it. Take your time and roll. 
If it's nice and warm, you can actually stretch it a little bit, just gently pull either side. And it just kind of depends as to how big you want your flowers on the design as to how small you roll your cane. The flowers that were on this, this cane was actually created by a high school student um, at Edison. She did an awesome job um, and it was really small. It was about like this. So I think the flowers that I put on my earrings today are going to be a little bit bigger. So I'll stop there with my cane and I'm going to get a little flat surface to work on. I'm gonna choose brown as my background color. Okay, so I have my nice flat surface ready to put my design onto. So if you're using this kind of blade, you can do that or you can use this. I'm so used to using this that it's really my go-to, but I'll show you how to do it with a regular X-Acto knife. Um, if it is a spherical cane, you're going to want to kind of roll it as you cut it so that you don't smoosh it too much. But now that I've cut into it, you can kind of see what that flower looks like on the inside. You can see each one of the petals. And what's cool is we can go in and texture or detail it after. So I'm just going to slice pretty thinly. I don't want them to be very thick because we're gonna have to roll back over it. Slice some little flowers. And I am just gonna cover my slab in these flowers. If you have a specific kind of design that you were thinking of and you don't want to cover it, that's totally fine. Do what you want. Um, these ones that I'm wearing currently had the slab fully covered and then I used a little cookie cutter to cut out that shape. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll see you when they're ready. Okay, so my slab is fully covered. I even did some little half pieces around the outside just so that I'm sure I have a lot of space to work with. A few troubleshooting tips that I thought about while I was doing that was if you find that you're really squishing your cane when you're cutting it, let it rest for a little while, maybe even a whole day. Let it sit there, it kind of needs to be unconditioned, kind of cooled off so that it's not so smushy. And when you're ready and you like your design, we need to roll it flat before cutting. So I'm rolling it with my little marker and you'll notice that the longer you do it, the more those lines kind of fade together. You don't see the individual little shapes as much. Our goal is to get it nice and smooth so that it's not really noticeable that they're individual little pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this clay tool. It is a pen tool, which is just a sharp little metal poker. If you don't have one of these, you could use a toothpick. It would work just as well. But I'm gonna go in and add texture to each one of the flowers. So I'm going to add little seed or pollen dots in the middle of each one. And then I'm going to go to each little petal and add one little line to kind of give it texture and make them stand out. So I'm gonna do that across the whole thing. All right, so I have textured my entire slab. I wanna show you up close what it looks like before we get into cutting. So here are the details. If you have tools to cut, so whether it's a cookie cutter or a clay cutter, it's going to be a little bit more of a precise look, but it's no big deal if you don't. You can also use things around your house that are the right size and shape that you can trace to cut out shapes, or you could even draw shapes on a piece of paper, cut them out, lay them on top, and trace that. I'm actually going to use the inside of this little roll of tape. So I'm just going to go in, use my little X-Acto knife, be slow and deliberate. I'm going to come over here and grab the other side. And once you have your shape cut out, depending on how much of the slab you're wanting to save for other things, I tend to just pull the slab up off of the shape. I'm just going to smooth out any imperfections. And if I need to go back in and kind of fix the details on my flowers, I can do that. So depending on how you want your earrings laid out, there's a lot of different options for this top piece. So I would like these to be studs that have a little top piece and then they dangle. So if you want to cut out a little circle from this, you can do that and add that to your top so that you have two of the same things. 
You could also cut just a single piece of your cane. Could be really cute for the top part. I'd say for me, I really like it when they're slightly domed, like these ones that I'm wearing. So I'm actually going to take the rest of the yellow that I have left over, roll it up in a little sphere, and then lightly press down like this to get a little raised circle. So I have two that are pretty close to the same size. You'll notice that this one looks a little bit dirty. If you have hand wipes, you can actually use them to clean off the clay. Alcohol wipes work as well, um, which is something that you might even have in a first aid kit. So I'm just gonna wipe off, get them looking nice. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So depending on how you're going to be attaching them, you may need to poke holes first. I'm going to be connecting these via a jump ring like this. So I need to poke a hole in each one that I can then string this through. You want to make sure that it's not so far down that your loop can't reach the top piece. So, But you also want to make sure that it's not right on the edge that it could break. So I'm going to decide which way is up on these earrings. I think this is actually going to be the top of this one. So I'm going to poke my pen tool or a toothpick down in there, kind of hollow it out a little bit do the same over here. These pieces need holes in them as well. All right, so these are ready to bake. I am going to cut a shape out of this gold one real quick to show you what you would do if you were making something for a dangly earring that required an eye pin in it. So I'm gonna cut out a couple of shapes real quick. All right, so the shapes that I cut out of here were just kind of some random blobs. I didn't make sure that they were perfectly symmetrical. I didn't plan them out ahead of time. I just want you to see that you pretty much just need a little knife to make this work. You don't have to have any perfect patterns or shapes or anything like that. But because we want these to dangle, we are going to need to put an eye pin down inside of them. We bake the eye pin inside of the earring. This one is super long. Um, you could either trim it ahead of time or I'm just not gonna stick it all the way in. So you, this is the part where it's important that your earrings are thick enough that you can safely poke this down in there without going through one side or the other. So I'm gonna take my time, make sure I'm not gonna poke out either side and just press it far enough in there that you know it's gonna be secure. After we bake it, we're gonna pull it out and put glue in there and put it back in so we know it's gonna stick. But you know, you don't want it to be just barely in there. Go ahead and stick it in. I put mine in about this far. And I'm going to do the same on the other one. So they're ready to bake. I'm gonna go ahead and very carefully pull these up off of my work surface. I'll show you what it looks like if you're using a regular X-Acto. Just really lightly get under there and kind of go all the way around it to make sure that it's not stuck because if you go to just kind of tug it off of there you're really likely going to mess up that shape that you worked so hard on so take your time peeling them off your surface and baking them you need to read the instructions on your polymer clay package for baking every version of the clay is different so read it Follow the directions. If you don't have a ceramic tile to bake on, you can use a cookie sheet with a piece of either parchment paper or um, aluminum foil and just set them on there. Bake them, let them cool entirely before you start trying to assemble them. Okay, so my earrings are out of the oven. They are all the way cooled off. Don't try to do it before it's cool. Have some patience. Let them get all the way back to room temperature so that they're not flexible anymore and you're ready to start putting them together. So I'm going to start with the studs first. And what we need to do is to connect the bottom to the top. I'm going to be using gold hoops. You can just pry the loops open with your fingers. Um, if you can do that and you want to do that, that's fine. Or you can use a couple of little pairs of pliers. 
And I'm just going to put one on the bottom, one on the top, and squeeze it back together. So you can see that there's a little bit of a gap there when I squeezed it by hand. So I'm going to go ahead with my pliers and just kind of close that gap. So here's my first one. I'm going to do the other one. Pay attention when you do it that they're both facing forward because sometimes I've finished closing my little jump ring and realized, oh, oops, one of those is backwards. Okay, so it's time to glue their studs on. If you are young and maybe not experienced with super glue, get a little bit of help because boy, do they mean it when they say super. You absolutely can glue your fingers together. And I actually had quite a bit come out. I'm gonna try to get the extra on my other one. You don't want a ton seeping out when you stick it on there. So you wanna really press. When you're doing studs like this, you want to get them as close to the top of the earring as you can. If you glue it down too far, they'll kind of sag forward a little bit when you wear them. So glue it up as far as you can and let it sit. I let this Gorilla Glue sit for usually about 15 minutes before I mess with it. It'll say on the bottle how long. And then for these dangly ones, we're going to have to trim this eye pin. You saw how easily that eye pin pulled out, and that is why it's so important for us to super glue it afterwards. So I'm gonna trim each one of these, and I like to just hold it with the pliers. I'm holding on to the little loop part, and I'm just going to stick it right inside the hole on the Gorilla Glue. And then you're just keeping it in the pliers. You're just gonna go and insert it back in. Now, it's important which way your eye pin is facing. If you're hooking it on to just one little hook like this, then your loop needs to be visible from the front of the earring. Otherwise, it's accidentally gonna be hanging sideways. So just pay attention when you're gluing those in. So to affix it to the hook, you can see that this little loop opens up. So I stuck my pliers in there, opened it up. And again, pay attention. Imagine putting this in your ear. It faces backwards. Make sure that your earring is facing forwards and then come in and close it. Double check that you don't have big gaps in the metal. Otherwise they could disconnect from each other and you would be bummed out because you lost an earring. I'll post a photo of what these look like in my ear. You can look at Instagram or Pinterest for ideas. It's really cool to see what artists are out there doing with polymer clay earrings right now. They're really popular, but there's a huge range of them. So I hope that you play around with it. I hope you make some earrings that you like. If you want to tag me to share them or share it to your library page, I'll be looking at those. And I hope that you had a great time with this class today. Thank you so much. Take care.